Charles David Bostwick was a grown man, a serious man blessed with an innate intellect thanks to his superior parentage and a brilliant head for business thanks in no small measure to his very fine, very expensive East Coast education. The highest echelons of Chicago society considered him to be both charmingly handsome and exceedingly capable, even while acknowledging that, by all accounts, he also found himself to be both handsome and capable. Yet no one could deny that Charles Bostwick was a man of lofty ambitions and inevitable success. Indeed, the man had finesse. He had panache. He had plans. Yet nowhere in the breadth or depth of his wildest dreams could Charles Bostwick have foreseen how his finely tuned plans could be so unceremoniously waylaid by two long-bodied, stubby-legged dogs. Although calling them dogs put an even further strain on his imagination, and he himself was the very picture of ridiculousness walking them down Main Street of Trillium Bay, clutching their delicate leashes, leashes made of ribbon, no less, pink, grosgrain ribbon tied in petite bows around the neck of each wee mutt. It was an utter humiliation to be strolling in public with two such unappealing creatures, not to mention doing so during a torrential downpour that left rain streaming from the brim of his bowler hat. An umbrella would be a fine thing just now. But he'd left the Imperial Hotel in such haste he hadn't bothered to check the sky, and now it was too late. He looked the fool with every aspect of the situation injurious to his pride, especially since he should be working right now. He should be at his desk, in his office, in Chicago. But no, he was here, all but marooned on this tiny resort island off the coast of northern Michigan and all because of just fourteen damnable minutes. Fourteen minutes, a mere 840 seconds that had forever relegated him to being the second son. He could have been the firstborn, but thanks to fate or destiny or midwifery malpractice, Alexander had come first. Alex, his twin brother in looks, if not in temperament, had come forth into this world at 4.08 p.m. with a smile and a coo, or so the story went, while he himself had loitered in the womb for nearly another quarter of an hour and arrived on his own schedule at 4.22 p.m. with a scowl and a squall. It was the longest quarter of an hour of his mother's entire existence, according to her, and he'd spent much of his life trying to make that up to her, and to catch up, if only figuratively, with his older brother. Throughout childhood, such was his fervor to be first whenever possible, his family had all but abandoned calling him Charles, and instead called him Chase. Intellectually, he knew none of this should trouble him any more. He'd proven himself his brother's equal, if not superior in virtually every way, and in truth was far more like their father than Alex was. But of late, the old sibling rivalry had been gnawing at him again, because it was Alex who had recently become engaged, and because it was Alex's future son who would one day carry the family moniker of Alexander James Bostwick III, and because, if Chase were being brutally honest with himself, he was upset because it was his brother who was engaged to none other than Isabella Carnegie. She was a distant cousin to those Carnegies, but it wasn't her wealth or societal connections that made her so appealing a bride. No, it was something much simpler. Isabella Carnegie was a true beauty with thick blonde tresses and cornflower blue eyes that appeared innocent one moment and sultry the next, causing every single young man who looked upon her to dream of marriage and causing every settled husband to dream of being single 